chances. Here we are again. Amen. I have kind of made it a goal for myself each morning that at some point in time I pay attention to the sunrise, light, like I need light, I long for light, and I try to wait there long enough until I am given the foundational yes, that yes it tells me it's okay to go out to the world, it's okay that I am not alone, be an angel out there. And in meeting many of you, I realize that you desire light as well, you long for it, you've been touched by it, enlightened by it. So each morning, if I have enough caffeine, uh, awake, trying to stare, trying not to drool, to receive the foundational yes, that I'm ready for the world, settled, deepened, grounded, fortified, claiming that God is with us. And the past weeks, especially here in Vicksburg, have been filled with light as our earth turned more and more towards the light heading into the summer season and the blue skies and the gentle air. I wonder if we could just take a pause right here in this house of faith and think about our last week and maybe we had a moment where the sunlight just overwhelmed us with the light. A moment when we felt the fresh air or did pause. 30 seconds, can we reflect back on that moment? It has been marvelous in Vicksburg. Birds singing, fragrance from flowers, blooming green, bearded grass, paying attention to the sun. I read recently that those who enjoy the sunlight for three hours before noon are much more relaxed. Three hours of sunlight before noon, it means you're a sunbather, but you are much more relaxed. It has a, a benefit being towards the light. We know physically we need it. So emotionally, obviously, we need light spiritually, and we get it today in the scriptures. <clears throat> Creation is always turning towards the light. The spiritual journey is described as moving into the greatness of light. Early Christians in the second century would take at least a year, maybe three years, in the catechumenate, learning about this light, disciplining their body, being open to the Spirit in a new way for three years until they became that Illuminati, the enlightened ones, those who have uh, a yes inside of them, those who have seen the light. We also hear in the 18th century, the German poet and statesman Goethe on his deathbed, all the beautiful things he's written, but on his deathbed he says, I see more light. There is more light. We always have turned to the light as humans. In 1948, Hank Williams passed out in the back seat of his mama's car with the band driving to Montgomery after a concert somewhere. And his mom, I love that his mom drove him and the band around for a concert, but his, his mom says, I just saw the light of Montgomery. And Hank Williams popped up out of the back seat miraculously and just said, I saw the light. I saw the light. No more darkness. No more night. 
Now I'm so happy, no sorrow in sight. Praise the Lord. I saw the light. It was a prayer of the backslider who lived in hope of redemption, who knew the possibilities of a brand new world, of a God who is gracious. He went on to uh, pen this verse, just like a blind man, I wandered along, worries and fears I claimed for my own, then like the blind man that God gave back his sight, praise the Lord, I saw the light. So light is a powerful symbol, outwardly, inwardly, marking the presence of God. We light candles for that very reason, and today in our scripture we see Moses being saturated, marinated, transcendent in light, a bush on fire, not burning. He was tending his flock, which tells us God shows up in our life in the most ordinary places, doing the chores unexpectedly, the bush turns, blazes, so for you and I, we get to have a mentality that each corner we come around may be a bush blazing for us to stop, to pause, be so manifested by it that we take off our shoes and realize that we are on holy ground and realize that this available, this moment is available for us and it's given to us as a gift. Meeting many of you, I know it's already happened to you while you're working in the yard or while you're holding a newborn or while you're playing solitaire at work when you should be working <laughs> or maybe you're fixing lunch for your child or walking a dog or holding your mama's hand, visiting someone in the hospital. These experiences can even happen at church. An encounter happens. And we know that we're on holy ground. We are moved from the inside out. The room changes. The light changes. Inside of us change. The heart is warm. The smile is natural. A satisfaction and a peace is given and an illumination that the world just can't give. No matter how much TV we watch, it normally doesn't happen through that screen. You and I never make this happen. It's given to us as a fantastic gift. And we get to accept it. We get to be moved by it. We get to be delighted by it. To let it kill us or kill anything inside of us that is not alive to love. Alan Jones says, it places us when we have these moments of burning bush experiences. It places us and places the awesome mystery of God front and center. It orients us towards this non-negotiable mystery as our only source of joy. And at its core is the promise of a whole new life and a changed heart. So standing in the sunlight changes us sometimes. It can bring us a sense of urgency. And make us ask the question, are you really going to keep living in the same negativity that you've been living in? Am I really going to keep the same patterns that keep bringing me down? Are the same doubts, are the same fears, are the same exhaustion, the same story, the same malaise? Is that going to be it? Or are we going to be stunned to repent? Of anything in us that is not of Christ. Anything that in us that is not life-giving and utter. Hello, God of second and third chances. Here we are again. Seeing something beautiful. It challenges us. And we know we cannot stay the same. And so it asks us to do a repent. Do a changing. Now with repentance... Maybe not so much like the signs we see on Highway 61, turn or burn. But maybe repentance is about shifting ourselves and humbling ourselves to say we aren't in charge of everything. We don't have to control 
everything. God is God. I am a child of God. I repent that I thought I was supposed to get it all right and so perfect. When these moments of light come, they do ask us, do you really want to keep living in the same exhausted way that you're doing it? And this gift comes to us, no matter what our birth is, our allegiance, how much money we got in the account, or our ethnicity. So we are always people of second chances, and this God is trying to get our attention, just like it got Moses' attention. Blessed are we who know that we are in need of God. And when we're given this gift of a burning bush, Moses, could you imagine if Moses just got this great experience and then went off to write a book about it and say, that was fun. I feel so much better now that I know God loves me and God hears the cries of the people. I'm going to go back to my flock. I'm going to put some closure on some of my wounds. I'm just going to stay right here in this little bitty commonplace that I know. No, God's intention for Moses, just like God's intention seems to be for each of us, is that God wants us to have this gift, to recognize it, and then take it and give it back somehow. Moses said that God, the great I Am, says, I hear the misery of my creation. Go forth. Liberate. Do something about it. Do not just go back to your own little simple ways. Go forth, repent, change of something, and help be my instrument. Go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses stuttered. Moses did not feel up to the job to tell the great and mighty Pharaoh of the entire empire that enslaves all these people to change your profit strategy. Go in and do a whole redo and just let these people be free. You know how it would be so easy to change something like that. No, he had to go out and fight and be imaginative and never give up. And then once they were set free, he still had to travel through a, a desert and part a sea. And he didn't even get to the promised land, but he knew all of his people were brought to the place of land of milk and honey. When we're given these gifts, they are not for us to go back and say that was great and just put it in our pocket, keep it for ourselves. Somehow we get to go out and find higher ground for new people. This is a story, and I'll, I'll close this up. It was a young boy named Papa. He was 16. He was smaller than all the other kids in the Boy Scout troop that I was in charge of in New Orleans. He was the biggest troublemaker. He was an old, wise soul. And every time Papa was there, he always disrupted this little bit of peace and flow. Uh, the leaders and I were able to gather with this rambunctious Scout troop. So there were times in that two years that I did this work that I did not want Papa to be there. I did not want him to be, be present. He had already been arrested a few times. It would be okay if he just got arrested again and got out of my hair. But Papa had two younger sisters. And when I met them, and I realized that he was caring for them, that his mother... And his father did not live up to their end of the deal that he was brought up on the uh, dicey streets of the Ninth Ward. And then when I saw him take care of the deaf kid that was now in the Boy Scout troop, I realized this human being has so much love in him. He is not disposable. We cannot let him go off to Angola and rot in that place. He has so much more to give. I wanted to take off my shoes. These experiences of the holy remind us of God's faithfulness. And these experiences of the holy, which we all get, call us to live life in a different way, some form of repentance. And these experiences that we get invite us to the task, an action, and a commitment to help liberate God's people. 
foundational, yes. But looking at the light, it's all, all possible. That gospel story of a fig tree not producing fruit yet. The gardener says, let's cut it down. But, or the owner says, let's cut it down. But the gardener says, one more year. Put a bunch of smelly manure all around it. Give it a new life and give it one more chance to, to produce the fruit. That's the story for all of us. Somehow the light and the manure of life somehow enriches us to go higher than we ever, ever imagined. So God of second chances and new beginnings, here we all are again. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Um,